So we have Lancaster, Lancaster Rotary Club and Matt Weidman is going to be getting us started um, and kind of tell us all about what they do and, and some other members of the club as well are gonna speak um, as well. So if you guys have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat um, and we'll kind of pull them out as you go along. They're gonna keep an eye on it too. And um, I think that's it. You guys have any questions? You ready to get going? I think so. Awesome, take it away. Well, thanks, Pam. Uh, first of all, it's a real honor to be here. This is such a neat thing that DD is doing with the virtual community. I love everything about it, and we are proud to be a part of it. Uh, when asked, we very quickly said yes. Um, first of all, uh, Rotary, for those that don't know, is a service organization. It was founded in 1905. It's a worldwide organization. We are just a small part of it here in Lancaster, Ohio. But Lancaster has the distinction of actually having two Rotary clubs. Uh, our club, which meets at noon on Mondays, virtually at the moment, and also the Sherman Rotary Club, which also meets virtually, but they meet in the mornings, like seven o'clock, those early birds on Wednesdays. And so, um, but when I say uh, uh, Rotary is a service club, that is a big part of what we do. We're dedicated to community service, both here locally, but also globally. You might have heard of some of our global initiatives, which include eliminating polio across the world. Currently, polio has been stamped down to just a few countries. Um, those countries change year by year as, as workers can and can't get into the various areas due to wartime and, and dangers and other things. But generally speaking, there's a lot of brave people out there serving to uh, immunize children against the deadly and crippling disease of polio. And so one of our greatest accomplishments so far has been the near eradication of polio. And it's something that we're very proud of. And in fact, it's something that we fight even to this day. Um, those Rotarians that are in this um, Zoom call can attest that, um, you know, even each of us has made an annual small contribution towards the End Polio Now campaign. And it's a big part of what we're doing um, as a local club at the very moment is to raise funds uh, for the eradication of polio. Locally, uh, we take on all kinds of projects. We offer, um, I think it's over $100,000 in scholarship money per year uh, to local uh, Fairfield County uh, residents through the uh, Fairfield County Foundation. Um, in addition to that, uh, we take on uh, the Dictionary Project. The Dictionary Project is where we uh, donate dictionaries to, I believe it's all of the third grade students, the local elementary school. And, uh, and this year we're not doing that in person. We've just bought the dictionaries and we're providing them to the school to pass out to in-person students. But um, that's an annual project we do each year. Uh, we do a Forest Rose Christmas party where the Rotary Club goes out to Forest Rose and we hold a, a little Christmas celebration. It usually includes some type of little play. Uh, from the Garrick players, but then also Santa Claus appears and passes out some gifts to the students, and that's always fun. Um, and we do even smaller projects. We do things like uh, uh, just the other day we went and cleaned up the uh, bike trails, and uh, uh, and you know got all that uh, in tip-top shape, at least the parts that we were at. And that was a joint project with the other club, uh, the Sherman Rotarians, which is a little bit smaller of a club, a little bit more informal. Uh, but they're a fun-loving group, and then they're people of action, as we call ourselves, too. So uh, Vic Christopher, who's here, uh, Vic is our immediate past president. Vic had a fantastic year. He actually expanded our global service reach by starting a water project, and he may, in a minute, want to talk a little bit about that, uh, but that was a big deal for our club, and it's something that we're contributing to financially this year as well, thanks for, to Vic's leadership. And then Laura Tussing, who's also here, um, Laura is the president of Park National Bank, Fairfield National Division here in town, um, oversees a ton of branches, has a big job, but on top of that, important to Rotary, she's our incoming president, and so we're excited for her leadership next year. And in addition to that, I believe we have Penny Wassum, who is also on this uh, Zoom, and Penny is, uh, uh, she does all kinds of roles within the club, but she's also a past president as well. And to the extent that the club donates a book each week to the Forest Rose Library. Um, Penny Wasson's the one that picks that out and, and uh, based off of who's speaking that day. Generally what a Rotary meeting looks like, uh, we start off with the pledge, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we'll go through a Rotary vision statement, uh, which talks about how we're 
uh, in our goals to improve our communities and ourselves. Um, and then also uh, we'll have some form of, form of an invocation, although Rotary is not a religious group, um, an invocation of some sort will start the meeting. And then from there, we recognize members that, uh, that have been in the news. It's kind of a celebration. We allow happy bucks where people talk about what makes them happy, you know, whether it's a family member's graduation, a birth, that type of thing. And then after that, we, we get into the meat and potatoes, which is usually a speaker. And it can't be understated in my mind, the value of the speakers and what we do at those meetings, because the speakers come in and what they do is they establish kind of a base level of knowledge about community programs, different things like the festival, um, charities, uh, initiatives that the government's undertaking, things like that, things that are, should be important to the citizens of Lancaster. Uh, they speak about that, which creates a baseline level of understanding, which, you know, being understanding what's going on is important and being knowledgeable is important. But in addition to that, it creates a familiarity and, um, you know, to the extent that it's much easier to be civil with those in your community if you actually know who they are, you've met them before, you understand where they're coming from. So it kind of creates a base of understanding and familiarity that I actually think is important, but hard to describe. So that is, in general, Matt Weidman's take on Rotary, and which is by no means uh, uh, the only take. Uh, Vic, why don't you tell us a little bit about what your take is? Sure, Matt. Thank you. Um, well, I, I'm Vic Christopher. I'm a, a CPA here with uh, Snyder and Company in Lancaster. Um, behind me is the theme logo that Rotary had during my year of presidency. Every year, Rotary International um, develops a new new theme and mine uh, the theme during my year was rotary connects the world and um when i went to the rotary conference where this was first introduced it really spoke to me um the idea that me as a rotarian in lancaster had this network where i could connect us to the world and do things at a, a global level um, really, really struck me and, and reaffirmed uh, for me everything that is good about Rotary. So um, as Matt mentioned, um, we had the opportunity to participate in a clean water program. That's also one of uh, Rotary's big global initiatives is to um, do all that we can to have a world where clean water is available to everybody. Um, the, the, the stories of um, so many parts of the world uh, where the, to, to access water, it's not necessarily even clean water, but to access it involves, you know, a five mile, 10 mile hike with a, a tub uh, carrying it back and oftentimes carrying back water that is bacteria ridden and, um, and, and detrimental to, um, you know, the, the children that are receiving it. Um, so, so Rotary has one of its focuses, um, a clean water initiative. Uh, during my year of presidency, we were able to, um, yeah, Rotary Connects the World, we were able to connect with nine other clubs in our district. And our district has, is it 40 clubs, Matt, or 60 clubs? I, I've already lost that, that knowledge. Um, but within our district, which is primarily Central Ohio, uh, moving off over into Southeastern Ohio, uh, we were able to collaborate with uh, nine other clubs and from a financial standpoint, we were able to pool money together that essentially was going to fund um, four new water pumps um, that were, I think they were all scheduled to be in Malawi, Africa. Um, so we were able to do that financially, but we were also able to um, pull our man hours together and there is a, manu uh, a machine shop um, in uh, like north of, uh, of Delaware, 
Ohio, where um, they make the parts that are used in these pumps. And we uh, reached out, there's an organization called Design Outreach, and it was formed by a couple of engineers who also saw this problem of clean water and, and its availability, and seeing a problem with pumps that had been installed in these areas. And what unfortunately has happened is a lot of these water pumps, I mean, they've got moving parts and they would break down and then there wouldn't be parts to fix them or there wouldn't be the, the know-how in that area to fix them. So I, and I forget what the statistic was, but the number of unusable pumps that are littered throughout Africa and Haiti and parts of India, it's astounding. Um, so this group of engineers um, developed a better, a better water pump. Um, and up at that machine shop in Delaware, they actually have a working model where we, can, we were able to go out and, and turn the crank and see water coming out. Um, they've had some of their pumps installed now for I believe it's they're going on eight years and almost no maintenance to these pumps so it's it's really phenomenal um, the work that they're doing and so us as Lancaster Rotarians we were able to team up like I said with nine other clubs in our district and on multiple Saturday mornings we would send teams of people up there to help get the, the piping and the rods for these pumps, get them, it, they, there's some manual labor involved. It's washing them down, it's packaging them up and getting them ready to be shipped off to whether it was Haiti or Malawi. Um, and it, it's just, it's, it, it was for me so rewarding to uh, not just have our, our monetary impact but to also just have our hands-on impact where you know we, I, every Saturday that I was out there I felt so good um, when I left there that I had really done something to, to have an impact on on the world and and that is part of being Rotarian and with the network of Rotary you have that ability to have an impact on the world so I, I loved my year as, as president. Matt has done an amazing job. Um, so Rotary lines things up for several years. So when I was president, Matt was president-elect, and his job was to primarily help me, and he was the best president-elect ever. Um, but it was also to line up those speakers. And, and no disrespect to Laura, I didn't get to work with her as president-elect. I'm pretty sure she's a fabulous president-elect as well. But yeah, he does win the title, Vic, but go ahead. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, in my direct experience, you, you, you certainly uh, carried your share of the load. Um, but it, coming up with speakers is, is sometimes a challenging thing for the, the president-elect. Um, and, you know, my year as, as presidency was going along just smashingly until the second week of March. And then things changed dramatically. Um, and Matt still through all that process was able to get us some, some incredible speakers. And I think it was our second to last meeting of my year um, where we had uh, Lieutenant Governor John Houston uh, speak to the group. And that was, you know, that was towards the height of the, the, the COVID pandemic. And just hearing from somebody that high up in governmental leadership um, was was really, really, I mean, it was, a, it was a treat, but it was also an enlightening experience. And, um, you, you know, that's, that's another part of being Rotarian is, is learning about what's going on in our communities and finding ways that we can, you know, participate and be, be helpful for the, the, the greater good. Um, our, our quick and dirty motto, motto is service above self. And, you know, every Rotarian lives that. Um, it, is, it is all about service above self. Um, you know, I don't know how long you want me to, to, to ramble on, but I could talk about Rotary for hours. And I, I'm guessing that's not what you're, you're wanting for your show. 
but uh, Rotary has had a tremendous impact on me. And uh, I've, I've met some, some amazing people through Rotary. And uh, I just, I, I, I love everything there is about Rotary. So I'm going to, I guess, turn things over now to Laura, perhaps, or do I turn it back to you, Matt? You're in charge. Yeah, Laura sounds good. Let's get Laura's take. Thanks, Vic. Sure. Thanks, Vic. So my name's Laura Tessing, and like Matt said and Vic said, I'm the president-elect. And I'd like to share how I joined Rotary, because I have a little bit different of a path of joining Rotary. Um, I, I joined Rotary, or I guess became aware of Rotary, when I was in high school. So my parents had lived overseas prior to me being born, and I had always heard wonderful stories from both my father and mother about the work that they had done overseas, the people that they had met, the humbling experiences that they had, and it really made an impact on me. And so in my <clears throat> freshman year of high school, I looked around Lancaster and I stumbled across Rotary. And one of the pillars of Rotary is the Youth Exchange Program. And the Youth Exchange Program, the predominant one that Rotary provides, is a year-long experience for teenagers aged 15 to 19 years old to spend an entire year in another country. And when you go to another country, often a child from that particular club that you're visiting will come and stay with your club. So it's a direct one-to-one -one exchange. And so that was my first experience with Rotary. Um, <clears throat> since then, so I, let's, I gotta think about how, where to start here. Why did I wanna do that? I don't know, why does any teenager want to do anything? I don't know, teenagers are, are strange beings and I probably just wanted to see something different and, and experience the world. I, I don't honestly remember what prompted me to do that. Um, but what I gained from that experience was an eye-opening experience of learning about other people and going to a new world where I didn't speak the language and I didn't look like anyone else. And it was, it was amazing. Something that you would never get to experience um, here in the US. Um, I went over and lived in Japan and <clears throat> a young woman from that particular club came over and actually stayed with my parents uh, during that year. So that program has been going on for Rotary for many, many years. It's a very vibrant program within Rotary worldwide. And the whole premise is that, as Matt said, if you know people and you have eaten at their tables and sat with them while they mourned and shared joyous events with them, it's so much easier to have a conversation. And in the end, conversations and community is what will lead us to a more peaceful world. And so that's kind of the whole premise behind it. As a student, it was, it was pretty cool to go abroad and, and live abroad and live with different families. I lived with a, a kimono maker, a Shinto priest, a family that owned a hospital that was connected to their home. Um, I learned Japanese. I, when I went over, I didn't know anything. I could say hello, maybe that was it. And the, the city that I went and lived in, they didn't have any English speakers, so it was a rough first few months. And often that's how it is for exchange students that come here. Our Rotary Club has hosted exchange students. My goodness, I don't know, maybe Penny might know, but I'm thinking it's probably, because I wasn't the first one, it's, it's probably over 30 years now that we've had exchange students come and stay with families within our club. Um, so it's really a great program, again, that kind of, the end goal is promoting world peace and helping people have experiences that broaden their horizons and humble them and realize that people that live in different parts of the world are are doing the same things we're doing right now they're probably having zoom meetings this morning they were probably trying to get kids dressed and to eat some sort of breakfast and out the door on their way to school and and i think when you can recognize that there are similarities and likenesses there um, it's much easier to find common ground and hopefully find resolutions that are more peaceful in the world. So that's how I came to into Rotary the, to begin with. Obviously, I came back, went to college, didn't really think much about Rotary again. And then um, when I started my career here in Lancaster, was asked to join the Rotary Club and have found it to be very fulfilling. 
love the camaraderie, the um, getting to know other business, business folks and community members within the community has been very rewarding. So with that, I will turn it back to Matt. Thanks, Laura. Very good. Um, a few statistics about our club. The Noon Club has 138 members, and we've been around for about 100 years. Actually, 102, maybe 103 years now, right, Vic? 103. Uh, to answer, I believe we have 65 clubs in our district, and the district is just kind of this bottom corner of Ohio. And then um, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention our um, four-way test. And so Rotary has something called the four-way test, and it is a standard that we use when making decisions. And this sounds a little off or a little different, but I can tell you that it's kind of good to have some ethical credo as the backbone of your group. And ours is before we act, we ask four questions. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? And the fun thing about this is that I have actually, I work with a bunch of Rotarians and when making a business decision, I've actually seen, oh, Laura's got it on her desk, I think. Oh my goodness. Uh, I do too, actually. But anyways, the, uh, not to be outdone by Laura. But anyways, um, the, uh, these questions, we ask these questions and I've seen them asked while we were making a business decision before, you know, is that beneficial to all concerned? And it's a little different than kind of a normal mentality that you see a lot out in the world of just, is it beneficial to me, you know? So it's kind of a neat thing to have that as our backbone. And to the extent that Laura did a great job, um, she mentioned something that we're all very proud of, and that's our youth exchange programs and our youth groups. Um, you guys, if you have children, um, you might steer them towards looking into Interact or the Rotaract clubs where they try to instill community service and these values of the four-way test in our youth. And so, and they take on a lot of similar projects to what we do and, and even, even the international projects like uh, raising money for polio eradication. So anyway, so that is uh, what I have to report to you. And I believe uh, we are probably around the question mark. I tell you, as a final note, uh, be on the lookout every year Rotary uh, likes to award the business e business ethics award, and that's based off of a business that exemplifies the values of the four way test. And so that's an area that you might be uh, rotary in the news as well. So, are there any questions? How, how can people become members? I'm glad you asked. Um, first of all, um, there's really there's not any weird initiations or anything like that. Um, it's it's a rather mundane process of you just let us know you're interested. We'd like you to attend two meetings to really make sure that you, um, you know, you find the meetings enjoyable, you like what you see, that, that you feel like that, that we're a good fit. Um, then the person will sponsor you, and, and that can be whoever you talk to first. I'll be happy to talk to you about sponsoring you if you're interested, as would Vic and Laura, uh, two people that have always been really eager to help new members, and Penny as well, who's on the call, if you know Penny. But um, it's a process of just, uh, we would ask you a few basic details about, you know, your phone number and address and stuff like that. And then we ask you, well, why would you want to be a member and what is it about Rotary that you like? And then we take that information, we take it to our board. Uh, the board meets once a month. They, they, uh, they decide uh, to allow members in. It gets posted to the club. And if there are no objections, then you become a member. And it's that simple. It's not a, uh, a very exclusive group in that, like, there's a bunch of rules on who can be a member and who can't. Um, really, quite frankly, all are welcome. And uh, we have got people in our club that represent basically all professions that, that I can think of. We have like 138 members. Um, you know, we've got um, kind of people from every industry you could think of. And social media presence. Uh, I would direct you to our website uh, first. I think our website is. Uh, is pretty good. Um, Google Rotary Club of Lancaster, Ohio. And it's important that you put in the Ohio because you're, you're more likely to get steered over to the Rotary Club of Lancaster, Pennsylvania for whatever reason. But Rotary Club of Ohio is where you'll go. I have the URL, I, I can look it up. And then also um, we're on Facebook. And so we're always putting something out there. Again, Rotary Club of Lancaster. And while you're at it, if you're curious about the Sherman Club, you can Google or put into Facebook uh, the Rotary or uh, Sherman Rotary Club, and they, they should pop up there. What am I missing, Vic and Laura? 
Oh, how much time does it require? Laura, what do you think? So we meet weekly um, and usually the meetings are about an hour a week and they're Mondays at noon, as Matt had said. And then there are social events or opportunities to do community service that are maybe once a month, something like that, but they're not mandatory. Vic, what do you think? Does that change if you become an officer? Uh, there is a little more time involved uh, once, you know, if you're uh, president elect and then president, yes. Um, but uh, it, it Rotary used to have meeting requirements that, you know, you were only allowed to miss so many meetings, but th those rules have loosened up over the years. What we want are active members, whether that's participating in a service project, um, participating in meetings. Um, we just, we want, we want active members. And um, Matt should be very proud that even in this time of COVID where our meetings presently are Zoom meetings, I think we have four new members coming on board, Matt, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. um, which is yeah, pretty impressive considering they're only exposure to our club thus far has been through zoom meetings and it's it's you know it's a little harder to uh have that camaraderie if you know you're in a a zoom meeting versus a a face-to-face -face lunch meal with a with a speaker um but i think that's pretty impressive that we've got uh four new people that want to be part of this this organization yeah in big points a big point. oh sorry Laura. oh no i I saw a question come through from Kyle. He asked about, I think, what I could see the benefits of having two clubs. Um, really, the second club was born out of the fact that sometimes it's challenging for people to make noon work. And so the other club meets at, correct me if I'm wrong, seven on Wednesdays. I think it's seven. Um, although I don't, I don't think that they meet at seven. No, no, they still meet at seven on Wednesdays now that I'm thinking about it. So for folks that noon doesn't work for them, um, it was nice to have another option so that those people could continue to congregate and create community. Yeah, in the, the morning clubs fun, um, I, uh, I don't want to pigeonhole them at all, but We're I'm about fine. to. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, new, the, the morning club, uh, they have a great downtown focus. They focus a lot on downtown activities and businesses. And uh, in fact, I think they, they meet downtown at the Keller Market House normally when COVID's not going on. So, um, and they are, they are informal. Um, I really actually enjoy going to their meetings too, but it's different. It's just a little different flair, but they're great. And those, you won't find a bigger group of people that, or I guess, a, I mean, they're just very active is what I'm trying to say, like real community minded people. So I wanted to mention something too that Vic brought up. He, he brought up looking for active members. So just to give you an example of kind of what we're doing this year, we have a, a Rotary Club service chair Becky Shade, she's also the Fairfield County District Library Director. And Becky is, uh, oh my gosh, taking the bull by the horns. And she has set up a community service project every quarter. In fact, more really, quite frankly, more than every quarter, um, uh, one per quarter. And these include things like helping with Meals on Wheels, on special projects, um, you know, the, the bike trail cleanup. And then also, like, for example, we do little, or, uh, I don't say little, or, but other important things that take place too. Like we have a bud a blood drive in two days, if you like to donate blood um, in two days that uh, is taking place at City Hall on the 8th. And so, uh, not at City Hall, it's at the uh, City Council Chambers across from City Hall. So just little things like that. So when we say active members, you may not be able to make every meeting, but you might be able to go to the blood drive and then maybe one month you might be able to do the trash cleanup on the bike trail or, or attend one of Vic's uh, awesome kind of water project assembly plant meetings, that type of thing. What other questions do we have? Looks like you guys covered it all. Nice work. Oh, well, we're glad to be here again. Thank you so much for the invite. We love, I mean, this is exactly what Rotary is all about, what you guys are doing right here. Um, and I love the way that this kind of stepped in and filled a need for community and connection at a time when all that was starting to feel missed. So great job to you all. Well, thanks. And thanks for coming today. It was, I 
to be honest, this is probably the most information I've ever um, spent time learning about Rotary. Um, sadly, sorry about that, but I'm glad I'm here now. <laughs> um, so it's pretty cool. Thing. What's that? I'm ready to join. Yeah. yeah. See, there you, you go. Maybe. That's good. Yeah, it definitely, you make it enticing. Um, not that there's much you have to do to sell. I think the overall idea and mission is uh, enough to sell, I think, for a lot of people to want to be a part of that. Sounds really cool. Thank you. Um, so if anybody um, has any more questions, feel free to speak now or forever hold your peace. And uh, there we go. All right, looks like we're done. So um, the one thing that I thought about, and <laughs> this is just my own pet peeve, and maybe you guys have gotten it. I would love somebody to gather all the shopping carts that have made their way into the wetlands and the creeks behind, like right off the bike trail there. So if anybody wants to put some waders on in there and just dredge those out of there, that would be awesome. It's really sad to see those down inside those, uh, those water, bodies of water. Well, and, and Pam, I'll tell you, I don't think our last uh, service project on the bike trail was, was the other day. We, we spent two hours out there and pulled out a microwave um, out of the creek. We pulled out a, a golf bag, which if somebody wanted it, they probably could have cleaned it up, um, stuff like that. But I agree. That might be our next, uh, our next service project in the spring. Awesome. Well, sounds good. Um, okay, so I'm going to uh, end.